Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 4th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. Checking the status of Lake Ontario, you can see that most of the ice from the past couple days is gone. Lots of open water for ducks, but there really wasn't much of a variety of waterfowl out on the water today. I didn't want to spend too much time lake watching because I was distracted by something else. See all these little black dots in the photo? We'll get back to that a little bit later. The weather today was overcast with light southeasterly winds. Into the afternoon, the sun tried to come out and there were even some small, brief blue patches of sky. And the temperature started around freezing but got up into the mid 40s, so it was a pretty pleasant day to be out. This adult bald eagle was perched in a tree early on. Remember all those little black dots in the other photo? Well, they were all migrating American crows, and that's what was distracting me when I went out in the morning because it was just a steady stream of group after group of American crows. And throughout the day, we had periods with not so many and then periods where we'd get large groups coming through. So we ended up with more than 2,000 migrating American crows today. Pretty spectacular. At Braddock Bay, we would sometimes get maybe a few hundred crows in a good day, but usually they were over towards the lake. But here at Derby Hill, they're nice and close and low, so pretty easy to count and pretty spectacular to see in such large numbers. Another species that had a good push of migration today are red-winged blackbirds, and most of them were adult males, such as these two in this photo. There are still a couple eastern bluebirds hanging around. Here we have some cedar waxwings, and we had a few small migrating flocks of cedar waxwings today, and one of the locals was even giving me some tips on picking out bohemian waxwings, which are a possible rarity to look for this time of year. Here we have a raptor with long, skinny, somewhat pointed wings and a long tail and an owl-like facial disc. This is an adult male, northern harrier, and this was the first one of the season. And note that the adult males, sometimes known as gray ghosts, have this really white plumage overall with black wingtips and a black trailing edge to the secondaries. Very distinctive plumage. In addition to blue jays and blue birds, we also now have a blue bull, a very welcome spring arrival. Here we have a woodpecker with a black and white back and a reddish orange coloration across the top of the entire head and some red here on the belly because it's a red-bellied woodpecker. And since that red extends all the way across the top of the head, we know it's a male. Here we have a distant raptor with a lot of orange coloration to the underside of the body and also the wing coverts. And we see a relatively long tail for a beautio. This is an adult red-shouldered hawk, the first of the season. Here's a small group of Canada geese flying overhead, and here at Derby Hill, we haven't really had much of a push of migrating geese yet, but I saw that Braddock Bay today had over 2,000 Canada geese, around 1,800 snow geese, and more than 700 tundra swans, so they seem to be getting a pretty big push to the west of us. Here we have a bird with very pointed wingtips, but this is not a falcon, rather this is a shorebird. Is a very short bill. It is a plover, and we see two breast bands. This is a kill deer, the first one of the season. Here we have a hawk with a dark belly band and dark patagial bars. So this is a red-tailed hawk, and we see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a plain tail that if we saw the upper side would be red because this is an adult red-tailed hawk. Here's one of two immature bald eagles that migrated past today, and this one was out over the lake. Here's another hawk where we see a belly band and dark patagial bars, although they're quite a bit fainter on this bird, but it is also a red-tailed hawk. But this one's a juvenile. We see it does not have that bold, dark trailing edge to the wings, and it's got more of a banded tail. And taking a look at the top side of the same juvenile red-tailed hawk, we can see these pale panels that they have on the inner primaries. And when the light shines through them, that can be a good field mark for helping to identify them. And here's a more heavily marked adult red-tailed hawk. Again, note the dark belly band and the dark patagial bars. And note that really bold trailing edge to the wings, indicating adult. And we can also see the completely red tail of the adult. We had a small push of migrating American goldfinches today with at least a few dozen. And we kept looking at them and photographing them, trying to pick out something different, such as a pine siskin or a red pole. But we didn't have any luck. Here's another stunning raptor. Notice how it's holding its wings up into that dihedral or V-shape. 
You can see that owl-like facial disc on the gray head and very white to the underside of the body and wings with dark at the wingtips and trailing edge of the primaries. This is another adult male northern harrier. And here's one more look at a different adult male northern harrier. And the amount of streaking they have here in the upper breast can be variable. Some of them have very little and others can seem quite heavily marked. I ended up staying out until it was almost dark, chatting and catching the last few blackbirds that were moving through at dusk. It was the best day so far for overall bird variety. Looking at the eBird list here, I had 45 species. Six of those species were new for the season, which were killdeer, turkey vulture, which did not migrate, northern harrier, red-shouldered hawk, horned lark, and common grackle, bringing us to a season total of 61 species. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had two bald eagles, three northern harriers, two cooper's hawks, one red-shouldered hawk, and four red-tailed hawks for a total of 12 migrating raptors. That brings our season total to 26 migrating raptors. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, rain likely with a high in the low 50s and winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So normally that kind of temperature and those winds would be a really good day for us here at Derby Hill. But unfortunately, it looks like that rain is pretty much going to cover the entire standard count period. So it could end up being a total washout or if the rain is light enough or there's gaps in the rain, we could get some migration of raptors or non-raptors. So I'm going to play it by ear. I'll probably go out in the morning and evaluate it and see if anything's happening because there's certainly the right winds. But when you get rain like that, it can just prevent any migration. So we'll see tomorrow what happens. And then looking ahead to Thursday, a few rain showers changing to snow showers and getting windy in the afternoon with falling temperatures, winds west-southwest at 20 to 30. So could be a good wind, but we'll see what ends up happening with those showers. But keep an eye on Thursday. And for Friday, snow showers early with a bit of sunshine later, colder with a high only near 35, and westerly winds at 15 to 25. So looking less favorable that day. All right, another great day out at the Derby Hill Hawk Watch, and it's really starting to feel like a hawk watching season now as the activity begins to pick up. And we had a few of the top birders from the local area visiting today and also some of the hawk watch regulars that I finally got to meet. So I feel like I'm really starting to meet all the people who are involved in making Derby Hill such a special place to count hawks in the spring. And I'm really excited to see what the next three months bring. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.